Oh, we're gonna risk it. We're going with this one. Welcome here to Town Hall Heroes. <laughs> We got the one with the right <laughs> ending. You guys will never know the secret ending one. Welcome here to episode number 157 of Town Hall Heroes. Tonight we're talking about Anna Volskaya Foundry, the live patch notes, not the BTR patch notes in full because that'll be next week as that I assume that patch will just hit next week. HGC, what's going on? Who's qualified for BlizzCon? And of course, some drama that happened last week and then potentially some viewer questions dunk you now have a voice what's up buddy i have a voice um not much is up man just kind of getting acclimated to uh having moved into the new place getting everything set up you can see i still don't have the green screen up still working on deciding what i'm doing about that and uh just kind of doing my thing man been streaming and uh living the hero's life is it weird living? So is this your first time living in a new location ever? Did you grow? Are you one of those guys that grew up in the same house his whole life? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, We've okay. moved quite a few times, but it's my first oh, okay. time living without my parents for a long time. It, does it feel like freedom or is it scary? Mm, I think the freedom part hasn't really hit me yet. Like I was pretty much free beforehand. Mm. The biggest change for me has just not been having my dogs at my house. Like I'm a big dog person and I've had dogs all my life growing up. So like the quiet in the house and like never having a dog <laughs> greeting you when you get home, like not having to do any of that stuff is the weirdest thing by far for me. That sounds sad, man. A little bit, a little what bit. Kind of, what kind of Bork would you buy? If you bought uh, I definitely wouldn't buy one. I would just take the ones from my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bakery, what's new, man? Congratulations. Spoilers on qualifying for BlizzCon. <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, well, last week was a great week. Uh, we worked really hard that whole week. Like, we knew this is our big game, um, and it paid off. We had uh, two really shaky games against Liquid, like our first two, um, but got that back on track. Third and fourth looked uh, dominant. We're very happy with it. And we secured the second seed for Europe going to BlizzCon, which is the big goal. Like, when we get to a LAN, we feel comfortable. When we're playing from home, it's like, uh, let's not mess up, guys. Like, So we're, we're really happy to have like successfully completed that phase, no mis major mistakes, and now we can get to the tournament prep as well. Nice. Uh, we're definitely going to talk more about HGC, you know, the teams that have qualified and what is left because it's not over um, a little bit later in the show. So look forward to that because honestly, there's there's a lot to discuss. We're going to open up the show talking about Ana, but I'm going to go on. I'm going to give you guys a story right now about my PTR experience yesterday. I have had zero free time recently. And yesterday I'm like, oh, man, I've got like an hour or, or two to, to play some games. Let's let's play Anna on the PTR. Now, this was early morning, not a whole lot of people on, no buddies to ask to, to get together viewer games. So I'm just going to be that pleb that queues up and waits for the estimated time. It says 15 to 20 minutes, I think is what it estimated. I know that's all just lies and slander, and I'm going to be betrayed by the estimated time. I'm committed. I'm ready. 40 minutes pass, Jake's getting a little you know, anxious, a little <laughs> antsy. Boot up Hearthstone, thinking, cool. You know, as long as I can uh, play some Hearthstone, maybe I'll stay sane. You know, turn two of Hearthstone, Q pops. Well, Alt F4, enjoy your win, rank 18 player. Uh, I will uh, go on and play my game of Ana. Game takes a little bit longer to load than I would like. Start to get a little iffy and finally load in. Desync. An error I have literally never seen in my thousands of games of Heroes of the Storm, where I was presented with the menu that you would, as if you hit escape, at the top of the menu it says desync, 
and then I have the option to change my hotkeys or change my video settings or <laughs> quit quit the game. <laughs> oh no. So I try everything. I try to hit escape, get rid of the desync window, whatever. Reluctantly press quit and am then presented with lever status on the PTR. I have yet to successfully play Ana in a real game. Oh. And of all the PTR games I've played, I've yet to play on Volskaya Foundry. And it makes Jake very sad. That's a disaster. Oh, well, God. at least you tried. I tried. You did man. try. Yeah. I've since purged my lever status by playing a game of Karazim or something. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. That was, that was brutal. But all right, let's talk about Ana. She is, in fact... Uh, you know, another Overwatch hero that has been brought into the game. I literally just played a game of Cassia, and I just realized you guys are all staring at that. I need to boot up the PTR. Um, is it <laughs> real quick? It is Anna, not Anna. 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 Okay. Anna. Yeah. Not Anna. Anna. Like. Okay. Yeah. And that is. I only know that because you know Overwatch and everything in Overwatch. She says Anna. Um, Okay, I'm just gonna make a prediction very quickly in uh, the first scene. That's gonna become Anna, uh, just because it's way faster to say that, and there's mm -hmm. no way I'm gonna try and say like Anna like every time I want to call yeah. it out. So you're probably gonna be calling it Anna quite a lot, guys. <laughs> I mean, that's that's fine, but you know, I'm gonna let it be known that it is Anna as the proper pronunciation. Um, all right, there she is. And naturally, if you've played Overwatch, you have an idea of what her kit looks like. Uh, you know, when you first saw the reveal, what were your guys' expectations for her in terms of healing? Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone who saw her was just like, ooh, we're going to get a skill shot as your primary heal healer. Like, that was the first thing that sprang to mind. But, she's a sniper, what, she's a what healer, were you thinking like, for, like, impact on that skill shot cooldown? Like, did you have any ideas in your head? <clears throat> um, Honestly, exactly what they did. That's, like, instant. What do I think they're going to do? Uh, okay, well, let's say, like, you know, 1, 1. 1.5, like, 2 second cooldown, like, kind of long range, like, line skill shot. And <laughs> it's exactly what they did. Like, they, I think they really know. It's, like, how I think Anna should play with that cue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like, I hadn't put much thought into, like, visualizing what the heal ability would be more than just, okay, obviously it's going to be a skill shot heal, that's hype. Like, and then when this, when I played this, I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. This feels right. It does. Uh, rest of her kit, she's got the W. And the two seconds of, you just can't be healed. Like, straight ancestral heal shut down, straight... Like mega value, March of the Black King. Nah, son, you can't do that. But it's also like the only snap heal she has for allies. Um, how do you guys feel about that ability and its utility aggressively and, and defensively? I. This is the only ability in her kit that I don't like, actually. Ooh. I have taken a pretty strong stance in the past against mortal strike effects in general, percentage reductions to incoming healing. I don't think they're the best way to balance healers and the best way to interact with healers. It's um, way more anti-fun, I guess, than actually engaging in counterplay, in my opinion. As a result, this is the only ability on a kit that I absolutely vehemently dislike. And But at least it's not exclusively that, right? It's a 16-second cooldown that is your only snap heal to save allies as well. So it's not like you can exclusively well, afford to hold it to use as anti-heals. Unless she's I'm, just a double support only. Situation. She's going to be a double support always because she can't heal herself. And, yeah. Yeah. and the grenade also amplifies healing on allies, which I think is, again, a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> so it further incentivizes double healer because the grenade on allies gives them a bonus incoming healing for your other support to take advantage of. That's a good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm very much with Dunk Train on this one. Uh, I mean, if you take Anna and you don't include that ability, then it's definitely not Anna. But at the mm -hmm. same time, if you take Anna and include this ability, there's no way she isn't kind of anti-fun and also promoting this double healer meta not double support double healer meta yeah which uh so many people have do have issues with so yeah it's a difficult one for sure but 
I'm not typically a fan of the ability either. I I think the fact that she's an Overwatch hero, though, like you said, her kid is pretty much defined, right? She has certain things that she kind of has to do. But yeah. in, in a world where a lot of people were complaining about double support, um, she only promotes it further for sure. But I, that's actually something I will we will talk about later on the show. Uh, the situation of roles in the game and where double support makes sense in terms of healers and then supports that are utility based and kind of some of the changes that are being made to some of the supports that already exist in the game. Um, but that's a topic we'll get to a little bit later. Her E is actually pretty nice. I, I think it's, it's really cool because it's a guaranteed 0.5 second stun no matter what, right? You get at least that mm. in the middle of a team fight and that's significant. That's true to Overwatch as well. Otherwise it's a three second set up right you can you know shut that illidan up for three full seconds to set up for god knows what i mean um i, I can only imagine the harmonies that exist with like you know a garage like oh just go flip that target and throw him behind the wall or whatever it makes <laughs> everything so risky uh yeah i love this ability like it's really it is pretty tough to hit honestly but i have been is it arguing false? that we've needed yeah it does it's nice. i've been saying we needed like a sleep effect so it's not as good at like continuing chain cc so it doesn't like it doesn't further optimize your abilities to your team's ability to like just chain cc and kill a target but it lets you set up and it lets you disrupt fights way more powerfully than chain cc which is something that like if she just had a generic stun then it's good in just bursting someone down where you just throw cc after cc and the target dies Whereas with a sleep, it's not like that. It's like set up, it's better for peel, it's better on not the focus target. And that's something that I love and want to see more mechanics of. And I'm really happy with this implementation. I mean, Dong should he just stay on my thunder today because <laughs> <laughs> he just nailed my thoughts on sleep. Like definitely, that's the main thing I wanted to highlight is like, this, is, this makes a playmaking ability that cannot be used in a boring way, I feel. Mm -hmm. Um, like every time you use sleep, it's it's not boring. There has to be something different about it. Yeah. Um, so I just thought it was super cool. And then last but not least, a trait, basically stacking a poison up to five uh, on enemies, and that builds up. And they've created so many ridiculously intriguing talents across the board for this hero. Some of them interact with that. You know, the, the auto attack and the auto attack has other interactions with other abilities. You've got some talents that affect both the healing dart and the sleep dart. You basically get multiple. What is it? You unlock an ability that you can use. It's a 45 second cooldown ability that then gives you three channels of healing dart. But you the yeah. only way you complete that quest is by hitting successful sleep darts. So like. The, it, it feels really good and it feels like her talent tree is going to be very flexible. Maybe not. Mm, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, okay, I, I don't want to be that optimistic. I think the talent tree is really cool. There are a lot of cool things, but I also think there's some outliers that we will discuss when we get to the talent tree, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's the classic, like, new hero itis where you're like wow like all oh, these mm -hmm. times are so cool like this one this is gonna be the one guys that <laughs> truly has a different build <laughs> but as we all know it's probably going to end up being mainly similar like a few times the way you can flex but generally uh also like some really bad ones so again i think it's really interesting talent design i think it's really fun like mm -hmm. playing the first few like week or maybe two weeks of this hero it's always super fun recently now they've got less like i can look and see what the best talent is options mm -hmm. um but yeah like i'm not ready to commit to saying she is going to be flexible she's got some cool stuff though man her the mm -hmm. level seven talent with her auto attack that reduces spell power as some kind of anti-mage property is really interesting and of course that trait is applied with either her auto attack or i think grenades apply it as well maybe you need a mm -hmm. talent for that like There's i said i've only i've only it, yeah. read and played bot games with her so um 
Eye of Horus, people were saying this is what triple tap should be for Nova. It definitely feels way more engaging as an ability. You have these eight shots where you're, you know, you can cancel it, right? You get afraid, you got to leave, you just cancel it. But you can shoot up to eight times, and it's a cool form of siege. It works in structures doing, uh, what, half damage? Or? <laughs> half damage, yeah. Yeah. So, like, if you, there was a keep that's low, and it's like, you know, 60-second cooldown, all right, we can try to finish this keep off. Um, it's going to be a rare situation to do that but uh, you can heal with it. Like it's global sustain for your team. It's really cool. And then this airstrike, four second grenade, they throw up and then it lands in an area. Will be kind of cool for someone that's just, you know, in lane, you know, maybe quick match. They, they, you know, you're gonna have a hard laning situation in a bigger map, throw that grenade across the map. Your, your uh, Sonya, whoever it is, needs to grab that heal, whatever. Not mm -hmm. gonna be a snap ability, but it's interesting, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm really glad they included this talent because when I saw it and started playing with it, I was like, "Wow, like that's actually so fun to like play this mini game." But um, it, it feels kind of useless to me. Like I'm not, I'm not sure what the use case is. I I was experimenting with that 12 second healing boosts mm -hmm. plus huge radius plus mm -hmm. that. So you chuck it up like before the team fight, and then your whole team gets like increased healing. Um. But yeah, de definitely a weird talent for sure. I'm glad it's there. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the indicator as to who you're currently locked on. Gonna hit, yeah. Because I think it's because they know if you're trying to aim it globally, like it's gonna be weird if you. It looks like the skill shot's gonna hit the person, but it's gonna get some hit something in the way. Oh. So it hits like, like an ally, and you're like, yeah. where's it gone? Yeah, it's, so, oh, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. It's like, God damn it, Mafurian! Yeah. <laughs> what do you What do you think about Nano Boost Bakery? That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, Nano Boost is... Uh, like, it's a 50-second cooldown. And I know mm -hmm. why. Is, it's because there's so many times where you stick a Nano Boost on and it just doesn't feel like it gets any value. Yeah. But there's a lot of times where you put it on someone else and they just 1v9 the team fight. So What's the cooldown on Sim Drone? 90. I think it's 90, yeah. I feel like this will get scaled to 80 or 90 eventually it's because of the <laughs> higher level play. Um, I mean, I think they, there was some discussion about the Dragon Blade interaction that's being changed. Mm -hmm. or that's not, not intended. intended. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there's still like, you know, we don't necessarily have mega battle mages necessarily, but late game Gul'dan, when he's got rampant Hellfire, that's going to be Cuba Jaina with like, Icy Veins. Cuba Jaina, well, like, or even Sonya. Just yeah. slam a jam a jam, son. Like, <laughs> it's going to feel bad when she's just coming at you. Well, um, I think the Sonya one won't be as strong because she energy. doesn't have a good way to reg Yeah, to yeah. generate rage. Yeah. Like, the Icy Veins Jaina one is going to be insane, I think. Um, uh, Johanna was a really good combo in my testing. I mean, yeah, it I sounds that surprising, yeah. but like... If she takes some like cooldown reduction build and then you mm -hmm. stick it on her, she's standing in their team like W. Just, yeah, W. Like, over, w. Yeah. Moonfire Malfurion, you literally just like hold mashing W. It's gonna be good, man. M M Medivh was a good one as well. Yeah, Medivh's gonna be obnoxious with it. <laughs> Wasn't there a clip of uh, March? I think, I think there was, was a clip. Yeah, yeah, I think it was March playing. He's like, what? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. with Master's Touch completed. I think uh, Malthel is the most ridiculous one, all in all. I don't want to think about that. Let's. So you, you do Uther, Malthel, uh, plus <laughs> Anna. You, like, their team, like, stacks up, wherever. You, he dives in, he ults, he gets Divine Shield if he needs it, Nano Boost as well. Your Q is on, like, I don't know how many seconds, 0.5 or something. Mm -hmm. Just, like, Q, 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 Q. It's, it's bad. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah, I think it'll be fun, though. But I think the biggest thing is it has, like, almost no cast time. So... Unlike Stim Drone. <laughs> unlike Stim Drone, which has a million-hour cast time. <laughs> yeah. Just Nana boost someone when they're in a good position or something, and they get to pop off, which makes it infinitely more usable. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. That's a good point. Maybe Stim Drone just needs that change. I don't know. Uh, I'm glad it's different. You know, initially I was like, how are they going to make Nano Boost intriguing with Stim Drone already being an ability in the game? And they just went full AP, um, mm -hmm. which makes perfect sense. And uh, it's, I'm, I'm curious if it's going to have an impact and uh, enough on the meta to the point where 
we start to see Anna Jaina as a thing, right? Like it's Jaina did just get a rework. She's definitely more viable than she was before. She'll benefit mm-hmm. greatly with completing her trait if she hasn't done it already at 10 when you give her that nano boost. Because <laughs> let me tell you, she's going to be getting a lot of damage done. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of mages that there's room for them to feel really good with that. Yeah. Is there anyone else that we didn't talk about that might be really good with it? Liming, mm-hmm. solids. Yeah. Kel'thas, solids. Yeah, I mean, all the mages, like the classic mages. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of like something, something that might be more obscure. Ragnaros is secretly insane with it, with Q really? reset build. <laughs> the, Q, the Q build against like stacked melees. Because you have to think like it amplifies like any hero where you have a feedback loop between like when they deal damage, they get healed, especially it's going to be really valuable on yeah. that skill based because like they do more damage and as a result, they heal more. And as a result, they stay alive longer to do more damage, to heal more. It's like the feedback loop of where like you can't quite kill an Illidan. So it kills your whole team. You're going to be able to <laughs> enable that on something like a Ragnaros because he's just mashing cues on everyone. Like hmm. how good is it on Illidan actually? It's probably pretty good on Illidan, but I don't think it's going to be amazing. Because if he's, you have to think his spells, like he has a lot of travel time during W or Q, so he loses auto attacks. Yeah. But it's probably broken once you get like the level 16 Q damage one, if that's what you take. And then you just like spam Qs on the person. <laughs> it sounds good with Alarak, And the healing right? from abilities as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Alarak and the pure burst one combo mages aren't going to get as much value out of it. Because it's like, if you hit a full Alarak combo, you're one-shotting someone anyway, right? Yeah, Generally, with true. your team yeah. follow-up. So like it's not as relevant as the heroes who have like short to medium cooldowns where it's gonna actually allow you to get a lot of extra casts like Leeming Q and E or like Ragnaros Q, um, Jaina Q, like that sort of stuff. Hmm. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, regardless, it's gonna be fun to see, you know, mm-hmm. the impact of Ana on the game. Um, and after this, we'll, we'll then get into talking about a little bit about the changes of making to supports across the board with the utility support now seemingly being a role. Uh, see, and honestly, my perception of a lot of the changes is that that is a, a conscious decision that supports are now filling a utility role or a healing role um, in the game. And I personally like it, but we'll go deeper into that with some, some patch notes to support that. Let's talk mm-hmm. about the new map. Next, I will just make a. Again, I haven't played it. I played a bot game, and the bots don't under. They in the patch notes are like new, improved bot UI. Bots that don't understand how to listen to my pings because there are belts that are bodying them on the bottom of the map. <laughs> Fantastic. That sounds amazing. All right, I'm not gonna play. I'm gonna be an observer. Wait. I forgot hmm. it was sandbox mode. I should have played because I could teleport wherever I wanted. Anyways, uh, initial impressions, three-lane map that has the items from Hanamura. Seems dope. What do you guys think about it? Because you've actually played it. You want to go first? This is Tim Bakery, so I don't <laughs> steal your thunder, thunder again. again. Yeah. yeah. Sure thing. Sure thing. Um, yeah, I, I had a really fun time on this map, actually. So I saw the announcement and... I, I was just like unequivocally like happy and excited to play the map and I have no idea why because I like it, it, even some people had like qualms on the announcement but as soon as I saw it, I was so hyped I was like dude this is gonna be like Towers of Doom like people are gonna be really skeptical and think it's gonna be, not be very good but it's gonna be so fun and uh yeah I had so much fun playing the map like I so I played a bit um with Moon I played a bit uh, solo queue like I played a bit with a few friends it's like Every single game I played, I just enjoyed the map a lot. Um, the one thing I will say, games were going really long. Like, people really? could not push very well at all with that Trading Lab Protector. Not sure why yet, but hmm. it's just a great map. I had a great time. It's gorgeous. I mean, all things considered, this is actually my first real time observing and just kind of flying around and looking at it. And it's just, it, it, it's freaking cool. Dunk. Have you had the same experience with the maps going longer? Yes. Um, Define an average game length, if you could. Uh, so I played a whole bunch on Monday. I would say average game length was probably 
outside of like the really one-sided stomps average game length was probably like 20 minutes maybe a little more um so pretty long in my experience playing customs um when i was playing with moon fairs it was Mm -hmm. games were going very long like we were seeing 27 minute games fairly consistently Hmm. yeah i so i love the map i think the giant robot is sweet um it's a three lane map hooray my one (laughs) concern okay so two concerns about the map the first one i'm not sure if it's really a concern but like I don't know how you actually, how you feel about the conveyor belts bakery. Like, I think they're really cool and a neat idea, but I'm also worried that they're going to turn out to be, like, a little too gimmicky and obnoxious. Like, that's mm. just my fear. Like, I'm worried yeah. that, like, after 100 games on the map, it's it's going to be obnoxious. But, like, I don't know for sure yet. Like, I think it's a really neat idea, but I'm just not sure, you know? What, what, what I will so, say about them is they need to be a one-time deal. They should never bring this to another map. Like, I'm fine if this is, like, this is the map's flavor, is it has this mechanic where you can only approach an objective in a certain way. It's a it's a different thing other than a bush, right? Because it forces your options. They don't change, right? <laughs> that art is trying to move across the belt. <laughs> you, you should have seen him try to rotate down to the <laughs> Oh, God. Right it's, that's <laughs> ridiculous. I, 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 yeah, I, I kind of agree, like... Although, wouldn't it make it more gimmick if it was, like, a once and done, like, it's only on this map thing? Mm. I don't know. I think it's... I don't know. Okay, well, I think the important thing is they have to be used sparingly from now on. Like, yes. They, they, they can't be the core mechanic of another map, because that would get really pretty samey, I think. Yeah. I kind of did share the same concern as you, Dunk, um, specifically about the bot ones. The bot ones yeah, are the really ones. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I, it's know. a lot of fun, but I'm I'm glad they didn't randomize the order of strengths. <laughs> so so bot is always the third one, and since there's two more, like mid and top again, before you go back to bot for the second time, I feel like most of the time you'll only see one per game. That's good. And there's no other reason to be near that bot side. So yeah. I think you can get away with it. But okay. maybe not. Like it really is on the line, right? Dude, that Abathur yeah. gift was so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the other conveyor belts I thought were just a really interesting layout thing. Like they didn't feel uh, gimmicky to me. Like mm-hmm. so, these ones on mid, you can use them when you have bot side position. You have a much easier escape, but you also have to run like away from your wall. So mm-hmm. that positioning dynamic was really interesting to me, and on top as well. Which is, you can chase super well, and you can escape super well, but if you go onto their side of the map, you've got no fast escape, and they have a lot of flanking moves. Mm-hmm. So, it, yeah, top and bot were really interesting. Bot one was really, really silly, but I think you can get away with it, since it's yeah. going to happen once per map, and that's it. Okay. Dude, Nova Snap hop, hops into that protector. <laughs> and then it's cool because it's it's a siege vehicle like the Dragon like the Garden Terror, difference being is it can support two players. You can be a gunner. The bots haven't quite figured that part out yet, so the gun's not turned on, but that's okay. They're gonna they're gonna do. It seems a lot squishier than I anticipated. Yes, it's only a five minutes into the game. Um, it's really squishy, but it does a lot of damage with the gunner seat. Like the gunner seat actually does really good damage. Okay, so that's cool. But the issue is still pushing with it. In yeah, a fight, it doesn't. I think it's insane, but mm-hmm. it just did not pass very well at mm. all. So I think on this map, and this ties into the other thing I was going to talk about, is on this map, there's no other realistic way to siege. Like, there's just the siege camp up top, but there's no bosses. Um, there's no, like, night camps. So there's not really great siege enabling, um, push enabling stuff on the map. Like, you can't end the well, game with all, a boss here. They're all item camps, right? Yeah, well, no, the top oh, ones no, are Siege. No, no. The oh, top are ones siege. are Siege. Oh, I that's cool. Think, nice. I think they're reskinned Kazra. That was my feeling. I mm-hmm. never confirmed that, but, but okay. they function they're like a Kazra yeah. yeah, okay. And then, so my concern is that it's going to feel like really hard to end games on this map compared to something that has a boss. Um, and I don't know if that's going to be a problem, you know? 
Hmm. Yeah, my my concern for competitive was definitely Infernal Shrines because the way the punishers work. What we're seeing a lot right now, especially from I'd say us and Fnatic in the EU, mm -hmm. is literally just saying, "No, we're not going to the Shrines. We're fine. Like we're, we're just gonna sit here and split push all day." Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of ways you can play that map. You can do the split push. You can do the let's soak XP in lanes. You can do the uh, trade pushing, you can do objective and try and big push with that. Like it's very flexible. Whereas this map, it's so one dimensional in terms of how do we win the game? Mm -hmm. It's we need to get the objective mm -hmm. or we need to win a big fight. And where can you win a big fight? The objective. Yeah. So that's definitely my concern for competitive alone. But yeah, so that doesn't bother me as much in Hero League. I, I think I'm like I overall like that and but here here's my two cents on it again not having played the map when when you when you have a big map like this overall I'm just I'm my mind is racing with excitement because it seems like a wonderful design the belts are a little bit weird but the Merc camp layout is is really meaningful right the support camp this camp is effectively the closest thing there is to a boss now. Um, maybe beef this up a little bit more. This is, uh, how easy it, is it to kill solo? If you're Sonya, can you just walk up and body that, that, that camp? Right. Well, that, that, we're getting there. We're getting there. I know that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. but, but uh, my first question is how hard is it to kill, uh, solo? I don't know. I never it, even it, tried to kill it I, normally. I think, I think it's doable, but it's definitely slow. Like the thing so has got it, a lot of health, it's, it heals it's not, itself. Is it like a night camp in power? Is it like a, a boss in power? Is it somewhere in between? Somewhere in between, I would say. Because I think that's probably good. I think the bribe is absolutely must be turned off. Like that is, this camp should feel like a super valuable asset. It's the one heal on the map. That heal should feel like a powerful utility for your team that allows you to fight. And because you guys are talking about the one objective being the, you know, the objective on the map. Uh, I think the siege is cool. I think keeping a siege camp on the map is true to what Heroes is, and that's great. Mm -hmm. I think the turret yeah. camps are kind of boring. Um, I don't know how meaningful they are, um, but I like the idea. I really like the idea of, you know, you know, you know, in, you have the dragon and you have the baron in League of Legends, right? And they give you buffs. I don't know what the buffs are because I don't, right? They give you something. Mm -hmm. I don't play the game enough. Or I never really played League. But, the, you know, having that kind of resource, and it, this is way more meaningful than a, than a stat buff having the, the heal item to cast and, and that kind of stuff that can really turn a fight. And I love that approach from heroes. I just want to see them um, make it feel like that's a big advantage because if you can just bribe that, like, that's anticlimactic. That's not interesting. That's mm -hmm. that's just kind of eh. Yeah. I mean the turrets are good at holding the objective space actually. Like they're they're pretty good. If you have a turret, like you're okay. probably going to win the fight cuz squishies can't just tank well, that's the good. damage. That's like, how it should feel, right? Yeah. Wow, this thing is so badass. It's re <laughs> yeah. it's really cool, dude. <laughs> Like it, 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 so I think it can literally solo the team. I'm not gonna lie. It but. looks yeah. like it, dude. He is just slaying nerds. <laughs> yeah. Throw I your laser, you, dude. Go. Oh, I think if you pilot away. right, it can solo the team. Yeah, because oh, it has a God. root too. If you combo the root with the minigun, <laughs> oh my it, God, it's insane. <laughs> so, so if you do the combo of you chuck out the root, you put the laser as they mm -hmm. get rooted, and then you just minigun them. It's like GG. Like, yeah. and charge on yeah. them as the root ends. Yeah. Like it's so much damage. Dude. But I think that's good because you need incentive for the second person. Like you need yes. incentive for the second yeah. person to actually like get getting inside. Two people to this mech, right? Yeah. Like, so well, the gunner's seat has to be insane. I, I I don't quite think so. I think right now they've, from what I can tell, they've got a pretty healthy balance of. Like I don't think you need a second person in it at all times. I, I think if you make it attractive but not necessary, mm -hmm. it's super good because that yeah. way teams can make that decision to only put one. And it's they still have to go kill it because there is always the possibility of hopping a second person in there. Uh -huh. But it still gives you four bodies on the field. I think that makes it a lot more dynamic once you have the objective. You can also sit the robot down and use it as a turret. 
by Wait, having what? the driver hop out and the gunner stays in. Yo, you can leave and then Wait, rejoin it? what? Yes, yes, you can leave and rejoin it. Oh! And you can swap seats when you're inside. <laughs> so what I was doing is I was getting inside and then like going up to start sieging and then swapping to gunner seat and my whole team is out and I'm just like lasering the buildings down and guarding my team from the gunner seat and not wasting a body in the driver's seat because I don't want it to walk around anyway. So, all right, let's... That's so sick. Does it function like a, a spider in Tomb of the Spider Queen where there's like a max timer? Like where, where there's, there's a it's like a dragon knight timer. The health decays? Oh, it's a dragon knight timer. So yeah. there's there's a health bar that is independent from the timer. Yes. And the timer scale mm. is based on game duration. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's good. That's really healthy. That's really cool that you can leave it, you know, because you leave a dragon, it explodes. If both drivers leave, does it just get destroyed? I don't know. I don't okay. remember testing that. Uh, so there's been some questions in the chat into the interactions that exist with the weirder heroes of the game and the actual mech. When it comes to Chogal, Gaul can cast his abilities just like a dragon. But then again, if you want to, <laughs> if you want a gunner, that's a third person. You're effectively committing three people to the protector. If you put Chogal and Ariel all in. Um, but again, you're getting gall damage applied. When it comes to Lost Vikings, uh, one Viking goes in. You cannot put a second Viking in the gunner seat as it just doesn't make sense for you to have two sets of hotkeys. That is not an option. Um, and I don't think there's any other weird interactions that like Misha can't pilot it, right? That's not a thing. <laughs> don't think so. <laughs> Ah, I'm pumped, man. Oh god, the pots are gonna get destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, some things to that I'm excited for is just the fact that we now have a winter tile set in Heroes of the Storm. So we better get a badass Christmas brawl or else. Um Yo, Medivh just got straight. But wait, bodied. the portals of have traveling look at the portal <laughs> go oh the polymon oh my the chromie oh my gosh what a god yo did you see the banner yeah, those, moving around the fights there are gonna be wild dude varian's <laughs> banner just has <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that chromie actually just calculated the the banner of the conveyor going up to like line up the scale shot that was so good Dude, oh hashtag God. calculated. Um, the creeps like flying them. Yeah, so other... you, obviously you can pull off Abathur of mines on these conveyors. I speak from personal experience. <laughs> um, that they get they get a lot of fun. So they kind of stick on each other. So if one gets pushed off the conveyor, it gets like stuck there. Um, <laughs> the creep spread. Look at him move. Like, pile up behind it. <laughs> I love yeah, the watch creep the creep spread. spread move with the tumor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, the bots knew the exact interactions we wanted to see. Like, this bot game has been flawless in terms of showcasing the weird things that happen on this map. Um, but, ah, man, it's uh, it's cool for sure. There's some weird stuff. Uh, other than the game duration being a little bit longer than the average map in Heroes, and maybe the siege potential being weak on the objective, um, do you guys have any other concerns with the map? Uh, not really. Um, uh, nothing that springs to mind. It seems really cool to me. Bakery? No, I, I think actually it's, uh, it's a really fun map. Um, like I mentioned before, like, we are a bit concerned about the fact that there is only the objective, and we are also a bit concerned about how weak is it pushing, maybe pushing game time up, but other than that, I am all in. Like this objective is, uh, it's really fun to pilot. I think they actually really nailed something. Uh, I want to speak about quickly is the brew. When this map releases, I think they said for one or two weeks there'll be a brew, which is literally everyone gets a triglav protector oh. just so you can learn how to use the. Uh, That's learn how to use so the objective, good, dude. I think it's on the PTR already. Just no one queues for it. <laughs> Unlucky. Um, yeah, man. It's very satisfying in terms of a concept. I already talked about, you know, my okay. opinions on that, the, that the camps. thing needs to 
not yeah. be available. Like, yeah. it, like really. It's so yeah. important. Yeah. This is a fantastic positioning. I think that with this map, they learned a lot from Hanemura. Uh, first off, Hanemura had far too many things to do and none mm -hmm. of them were impactful enough. So instant refocusing, everything, like get down into kind of like a science um, to like, this is how you play the map. So happy to see that for sure. The support camp in the middle in a completely contestable location. So nobody needs to go, oh, let's go take our support camp because it's, it's spawned and they'll do the same. It's going to be boring. Like since it's in the middle, that encourages fights. So fantastic position. If it just needs to not be bribable because if you can bribe it, as soon as someone it spawns, people are going to turn up with their bribe stacks. You're going to have Novas try to solo it. Bright Wings will run away from the team to go there. Like, Would you be okay with this getting the boss tag? Maybe, like, I don't, this doesn't feel like a boss pit, right? Usually the boss locations are larger and it's, it's not huge. Mm -hmm. Um, I, this is actually a really sneaky little brush that you can hide shit <laughs> in ward, you know, with Abathur mines, whatever. That's really kind of cool. Um, do you think that would be a good idea for it or just make it unbribable? You know, blue team is wrecking. I, I'd honestly be fine with either. Like it does, I think, have the importance of a boss. If you get, have that support camp, then you can win a fight that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Like I, it is really important, and that would solve the bribe issue. So why is that fall of gold tilted? All, all the cores of the, the code did. That it's one like shouldn't stack be them though. Up. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I was treating. I hit the but. I hit the hotkey as if an esports match during HGC ended. I have a hotkey that brings us back to the caster scene. It's just, just uh, observer reflexes, I guess. Uh, anyways, cool map for sure. Uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Naturally, the uh, the map will go be going into live servers next week by the the standard uh, rollout phase for Blizzard from PTR to live, and. Um, before long, we'll be getting uh, more impressions on it. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, there is actually going to be a show match. Gale Force and Team Freedom are playing in the, Vol it. the Volskaya Foundry Showdown. And Jay Howe and I will be casting that on twitch.tv slash So if you guys want to get an early look at competitive games uh, on that battleground, it's on twitch.tv slash blizzheroes tomorrow at 1 Eastern. 10 Pacific, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm pumped to see. I hope we get Ana games, right? Because she's allowed. Everything's allowed. All the reworks. And I'm pumped to see the way they approach, uh, you know, controlling that space, what heroes work, and yada, yada. It's a show match. Uh, I think the teams are being compensated straight up this time. Last year, the showdown was if you win a game, you get $1,000, and it was five games guaranteed. So theoretically, you could just, one team could get 5K, and the other team could get $0. I think they just took a similar budget or the same budget and are paying the teams evenly to compete, which is good, right? It's their time. They're committing to give us an awesome show and uh, unveil potentially new strats. Will Volskaya Foundry... No, I already answered my question. I'm stupid. I was going to ask if it was going to be in play for BlizzCon, but HGC doesn't work that way. Um... It doesn't. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, as soon as we transitioned into talking about the battleground, there were several people in the jet chat that said, Bakery promised to tell me about Anna's talents. So I, mean, I don't know when that happened, to be honest. Well, well, I, I think it's one of you guys mentioned. I think I mentioned that we would talk about talents a little bit. <laughs> and then we skipped it. And I was like, okay, we're skipping it. That's fine. <laughs> Well, yeah, because it does take now, a lot boys. of it does take a lot of time to go through the talents, actually. Okay, yeah, I guess we can do like some some highlights, quick highlights, talents. yeah, yeah, like highlights and low points, I think, for talents. Okay. All right. Um, Level one. Highlights, piercing darts is super satisfying. For me, I had a blast with the increased range and then the piercing. Once I got it, it was a really fun mini game to have piercing heals, especially. See, I actually felt the same way about Detachable Box Magazine, which is the when the reward is refresh mm -hmm. and give you three charges of healing dart. Um, like, you know, there's a Sonya, you know, she gets Gauss thrown in or something, and I, I do this really sick play where I, like, go off to the side, split from my team slightly, Q, 1, Q, 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 nail them all. It's like an ancestor. It was so much healing. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a really, like hype moment for me personally. I, I think it was really exciting, or it would be really exciting to see that in professional play as well. Mm -hmm. 
uh, like how people make use of that. Maybe they can heal the whole team in like a circle. Maybe they target him one one. But yeah, I feel that's a very really interesting talent. That's uh, yeah, the, adding Tadras to a non charge ability is really neat. It's what forty five second cooldown for the the three heals, right? I think so. That sounds right. Yeah, you basically it would be a set to your one hotkey when you complete the quest, right? And you you would then hit one and get your three heals in 45 seconds. Yeah, it's really cool. Really cool uh, option for her. They're all three skill shots too, because so that means you could spread it out. Even more useful than an ancestral, theoretically. <clears throat> Can we talk about the grenade talent really quick, being a permanent 25% healing boost on your team? <laughs> mm, that's scary. Yeah, okay. Wait, gr grenades calibration, and you do it with airstrike as well? So... Well, you know that airstrike cooldown reduction is even when you regular cast it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, so it's yeah, just no, it's just a hundred percent uptime. It's a hundred percent uptime, twenty five percent incoming healing buff on your team. Where was the radius talent? The radius talent is part of this quest, I think. Right. Okay. The healing radius increased by hundred percent. That's insane. That's insane, yeah. dude. So, so, grenade calibration, airstrike, you chuck it up, it comes down, you get your whole team under the healing buff duration for 12 whole seconds. You play with a Lucio, he's got mm -hmm. a and a Lucio, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Full heal your team, yeah. Every 10 seconds. Consider me worried. Level 4. We well, showed airstrike earlier. Interesting mm -hmm. idea. I don't know if it's going to be mm -hmm. good, but it's interesting. I think people will take it on grenade build just for the passive CDR. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. Overdose. Overdose was super fun to play with. Uh, I really like stacking detachable bikes magazine with this. So you hit sleep uh -huh. dart. You all stack around them. You W and auto, and you get the five stacks instantly. Mm -hmm. it's a whole lot of damage coming out actually. Yeah, overdose is fun. I tried to use aim down sights. I didn't feel like it was impactful. Yeah, I, I found it really clunky. Like, well, not the mechanic itself. It's just when I was playing with it, I was like, eh, I don't feel like I'm actually getting value. I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure that the attack range is meaningful for her, you know? Yeah, it, it's it's really kind of interesting that they tried to make, like, the auto attack kind of a thing because she's a sniper. You know, like, thematically, she's a sniper. And they gave her this at four, and they gave her an upgrade for it at 20 if you pick it at four which brings the range up to four and that's cool. But I mean, it's not like she's healing with her autos or anything, right? It's not like her autos give her more healing or any, I don't think there's any talents that have that interaction where auto attacks equals Wait, healing. Wait, well, there there's, a talent, there's a talent that kind of does that at 16 that we can oh. talk about eventually. We'll get, okay, we'll go down the line. Yeah. Uh, so temporary blindness, solid talent, can't boing. My yeah, dummy agent was interesting against uh, against like mages or like front lines, like maybe Malthou or something. I or think my like, dummy agent is busted. That's I think this talent is damage yeah. Yeah. I think so. Like uh, I think this talent is going to be a hundred percent must pick. Basically, the enemy has even one somewhat spellcaster. Like you completely turn off their hero. Well, I mean, it's it's strong as everyone in the front line. Like even like a Diablo yeah. or something. It's, it's still kind of good. Like. Yeah. Sonia? I mean, <laughs> so yeah, Sonia can't do anything. Alarak doesn't get to play the game. <laughs> Chromie, Whoa. Kael'thas, like, the thing is, if you take the nade talent, where it applies doses, and, and you just, is? like, yeah. you just Holy chuck a nade shit. at a Chromie, then, like, she's not a hero for five seconds. Because <laughs> it only takes, like, two stacks before damage is basically irrelevant, honestly. So throwing grenade is 30% of spell damage reduction right there. Yeah, with those yeah. Yeah. two stacks. Holy shit. Yeah. And it could hit three heroes, right? Good, yeah. And you can you can keep stacks up on like if they have two frontliners, you can easily keep five stacks on both frontliners, and then like their Murden and their Arthas are doing zero spell damage to you. Like, okay, damn. It, yeah. This talent is really busted. This one, I expect orange text for this one to be nerfed actually by the time it hits live. Like that's how quick I expect. Uh, this yeah, to like, I, like 10, I think so. Ten percent well. still too strong. Yeah, or? ten percent at first. I, expect, I think yeah. it might go even lower. I think this might end up at eight percent. Hmm. Yeah, but I expect orange text for 10% for this to yeah. live. That's 
15 is pretty bonkers. Yeah. Up to 70 but, uh, or whatever. We'll whatever. I mean, debilitating dart. Uh, it's, it's kind of weird. I thought these two kind of stepped on each other a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's kind of her... There's, brain, there's no way there's no way that is actually reliably landing on a uh a a backline. or something like, literally no way yeah <laughs> it has to be someone in front line or someone like right next to you so mm -hmm. mm. it's just a bad shrink ray yeah it is just a bad shrink ray because it doesn't slow them at all and it, the cooldown is still long and it's a skill, skill shot, shot. Like, yeah like yeah the payoffs the payoffs not high enough if it was like a 15 second it's a level then, well it's yeah. a level seven it's a level seven talent so like that's why seven versus technically 13, has to but be worse but like it's, way it's not worse, that big though. of a difference in power level yeah between the two tiers yeah all right uh we talked about 10 already what do you guys think will be meta you think both are viable how do you feel about eye of horus I think I have Horus will be picked because it's a global, okay. and I think that's huge. But I think Nano Boost will also see play when you combo with it. Like, if you draft around Nano Boost, it'll be good once people find out the best Nano Boost target. But then when you just generally pick Anna, you'll take I have Horus for the global, probably. Global <laughs> follow up? Yeah. It's so valuable. It it's is. just too valuable. The continuation yeah. of uh, cleanse removal in the game persists as Purifying Darts is a 13 talent. Seems. Pretty damn good to have a two-second removal of roots and slows. Yeah, I mean, I think, mm, like, these ones are difficult because, again, the, the thing about cleanse is that it really does have to come in, I think, at 7 or at 10. Like, it's very hard for any cleanse sense after that hmm. to to pick them for she, that cleanse. She's a double support hero anyways, Bakery. God damn it. Um, but yeah, I, I do think these are like good takes on that. So you, thankfully, there's no Uther mistake here. We do actually have a talent to take if um, <laughs> they don't have any CC. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like removes roots, two second cooldown, that's good. Uh, removes stuns, two second cooldown, that's really good as well. How do you feel about the fact that they made that very distinct decision to be like, all right, we have an anti-stun that gives you armor, and then we have the anti root and the slow, but you get more healing when you remove that slow. Like it, it gives her like some really nice options based target things, which is good. Um, but what's your takeaway on this tier overall? I'm personally against the splitting and narrowing of the cleanse replacement talents, let's call them. But if it's the uh, two second cooldown, like it can't do like, everything, right? Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, I just don't like the direction of splitting everything up and making things narrower, as far as like countering more specific things goes. I don't think that's the right direction. As far as this tier overall is concerned, I think this tier is fine. Hmm. Um, if you don't give her an active cleanse and her like these darts are all on delay too, like so you fire them, it doesn't hit instantly. It's a skill shot, like. It's not as reliable as cleanse, so I think it's okay that they are kind of unique and cool to her character. It's just as part of an overall larger trend of removing cleanse, it's still worrying to me. Fair the same way. Fair enough. 16, we mentioned the empower consecutive healing darts. That's something consecutive doses empowers healing okay that's what you guys were mentioning mm -hmm. so the auto attacks can then boost your q that's cool yeah this talent was insane when i played with it like if they're running <laughs> double frontliner and you have even just a couple doses on either like 50 percent healing Chuck boost is easy well, like, yeah, yeah it's easy to hit 50 percent healing boost and once you're at like 70 80 100 healing boost from this talent then you are like doing work you get those three charges of your Q from the level one talent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whole team just gets filled up. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty gnarly, dude. Yeah, I I, I think uh, I think ten percent probably a bit too high on this number. <laughs> I, I had the same experience as Dunk Train. Um, I can remember we were fighting with the bot shrine when the sixteen hit, um, and they had a Muradin. They had like an Arthas, just five stacks on them both, like chucking some grenades every now and then to get even more stacks, like. Uh, I was healing so much, it uh, really 
took me by surprise how they were like, oh, okay, so this is the lower skill one. Let's make this uncapped. Like this really hard one, really tough to do. You got to hit consecutive healing darts, can't miss on. Well, let's make that capped and less per hit. All right, good job, guys. Like, I think uh, probably switch the switch those yeah, two. Because there's no cap on this, is there? Completely uncapped, yeah. <laughs> Not that I found, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bonkers. Sharpshooter was really hard to stack. Oh, Sharpshooter was really hard to stack when I was yeah, playing dude, with it. I, like, I kept dropping that. <laughs> like, I could get to, like, four stacks, maybe, or five consistently, and even then it was, like, so... It's nerve-wracking, dude, trying not to miss those. Uh, may Especially maybe... when it's a two-second cooldown. Uh -huh. yeah. If it was a five-second cooldown, I think I could nail it. But when mm -hmm. it's two seconds, I don't want to take that extra, like, yeah. let's line it up moment. I just want to... Just spamming queue like it's up i want to cast it yeah. mm -hmm. so i it makes me really on edge playing with that talent i i don't think we're gonna see much of that at all um contact healing any good um yeah like yeah. you're not casting grenade for the initial for healing. healing like yeah. realistically um i yeah. guess this is probably okay if you're a solo healer in which case you're not in a good place anyway but maybe this will help i don't know oh did you play this with the S like AOE like insane? I picked it and I never felt like it was impactful. Really? Even with like all five of your team like in the area, you like, still didn't feel like it did no, a lot. It it does a lot, but it doesn't do more than concentrated doses. Is the thing? Yeah. Okay. That, like, that's what's yeah. Mean. So maybe it's just that that's such an outlier that it makes that feel less good. You know? Yeah. Maybe. Like I didn't get a chance to play with it. So. Mm -hmm. So Nano Infusion at level 20 seems monstrous. That 50% healing received to all the spell damage done on that mage or whomever is getting the Nano Boost, like, they're going to... Well, it's great with Genji, by the way, guys. Like, <sighs> That's going to get <laughs> Um Is there anything else here that you guys think is going to be really good? Like, the max doses puts Nano to sleep. That's insane. Yeah, no, um, Somnolent Doses is hot, dude. That talent is gnarly. So five doses is max. The grenade gives you two. Three autos. Yeah. Her autos are the, one, two, three. The sleep like, dart. The sleep dart gives you two as well if you oh, take the talent. It's <laughs> so you can sleep dart someone. Wait full duration. Auto grenade, and they're they perma sleeped sleep. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're perma sleeped, dude. It's Yo, so it's sick. Busted. It, it, it's literally as good as a VP for like isolating and catching someone out. Mm -hmm. Maybe even better because like they can run a bit and then you can like. Get them again. So. <laughs> it's, Holy it's shit! Really no, it's really gnarly. Somnolent dose is insane. Has hashtag. I like the resident sleeper in chat, guys. That's a sleeper build. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basic attacks increase attack speed. Seems shit. Um, I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang no, on. That one on. is really? actually good. It, 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 this damage is meaningful really enough. Good to me. Yeah, this one was good. So with the what was it called? Concentrated doses or something? Mm -hmm. Like so I, I had dynamic shooting, we were pushing bot lane, so I just stack up on like the towers mm -hmm. and then they try and fight. I just instantly get like I don't know how many I had. I, I had like fifteen to twenty stacks. So I was just like, <laughs> like <laughs> and then I was just healing so much with the yeah. with the cues. So shit. It's no that one I think is actually good. You guys have me really excited because it sounds like she's got some really good talents across the board Her kids... she's fun man yeah. like she's, she's a lot of fun, fun yeah yeah not my hero but a lot of fun i'm, I'm sure snitz is gonna have a great she's not time. medic you don't or, hit or, or Q <laughs> once you know <laughs> snitz, snitz or mene they're, they're gonna be loving this hero guys like... so um we are gonna transition to talk about the live patch but i'm gonna open this conversation to just basically the direction of double supports and um, how that's been a thing for a while. We've talked about it in a few recent episodes where double support is um, back in the meta and it doesn't seem like there's any, it, it's going anywhere, right? It's been, in, it's been in, then it's been out. It's been double warrior, double support, whatever. Um, but, you know, I, I made the argument that there just aren't, there aren't like, you know, hard jungle roles necessarily, right? It's a game where you have a tank, you have a healer, and from then on out, your your composition is fairly flexible. Typically, you have one melee and a solo lane, and typically you want to have at least one ranged assassin. But that fifth slot oftentimes ends up being a support. Tons of people in chat are saying right now, I hate double support or double support, dance game, pog champ, whatever, and that's fine. But it almost seems like a, a bit of the direction is there's a number of supports that are becoming 
you know, masterful for utility. And then there are other supports that are becoming a little bit more uh, of like the healer. And I, I wonder if um, that's the intent for Blizzard and how you guys feel about that. Because what we have Brightwing changes where Brightwing is getting just a little bit more love to be uh, a healer essentially, but also maybe she can do a little bit more. She's a little bit more clear, right? She's got global. She's got, she's got a little bit more clear baseline or a little bit safer, clear at least, um, than the average support. And she's got the global. Um, but then you've got Rengar who's really just kind of a healer and they, they, they toned, they changed his Q a bit. They, they flattened it out a bit too. Um, so he's again, but he's got the utility of being able to Merc. And now we've got Anna who absolutely isn't a solo support. But she's she's definitely she's still a support at the end of the day. She heals, she she has setup, and she empowers um, with her W promoting more double support. Do you guys feel the same way that like they're trying to make these like the Karazims and the Bright Wings and the Anas into these second supports to be a standard thing? I don't know. I, I'm I'm still on the fence. So. There's a lot of evidence that does seem to be pointing like, guys, we are making like supports be distinct from each other. We are giving, uh, we're giving you these like supports that are healers. We're giving you the Tyrande, um, Tassadar, um, Kamadiv, Kanazaya, who these are utility supports. Um, oh, Lily, I guess, also sits in that. Kazim possibly moving that way as well, but. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's like double support is like everyone's freaking out. They're like, we don't want double support. And then Blizzard's giving a players like, yeah, guys, don't I? We're on you. Like, we, you know, we don't like it being picked all the time either. Like, we're, we're going to investigate. We're working on this. So it, it does feel weird to be intentionally pushing the game in that direction. Um, hmm. If, like, that's truly something that everybody's against. And it does seem like the majority of the player base is not a fan of double support, let alone double healer. That, that's a whole other kind of the worms. Yeah, double mm -hmm. healer is not what we're experiencing. We're experiencing the Medivh, the Tass, the Ana. Maybe, like, D D Lucio fits in the healer spot, I guess. But in some situations, he ends up being the utility for the speed boost, right? You'll see Lucio yeah, Luther. He does. Luce, you know, it, it happens. Dunk? Mm. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I think narrowing the healers and making them more, like, trying to make them so unique is definitely going to basically just keep forcing you to have that secondary support role. And I don't know. I'm torn because, on the one hand, like, I think conceptually, like compositionally, it's cool to have the option to have healer and then like a Tast or a healer and then a Mediv. But then in the reality of how it plays out, it's like it makes the games less interesting, I think. So I, I don't know what the solution is. I don't think there's an easy solution. So we've talked about this a lot. We, yeah. I don't want to get too deep into mm -hmm. it. But <laughs> the one thing I, I do want to stress is that there's a really common misconception that I see popping up a lot right now, which is people saying, well, we have double supports because supports are too weak. And that's not the case. And there's a lot of people saying we have double supports because supports are too strong. And again, I don't believe that's the case. It's supports are too specialized. Yes. Like they are too good at what they are best at and they are too bad at what they are bad at. Like, the problem with picking Uther is not, well, Uther's too weak. Like, Uther is a weak hero, so we need a second support to help him. Of, of course it's not. And it's not, well, Uther's the strongest, so we don't need anyone to help him. Like, it's, you need to pick Uther, and then if they pick a Lunara, or if they pick a Gul'dan, you then need to decide, are we going hardcore dive, or are we picking a second support so that we can actually live when they start attacking us? Like, that's the decision you have to make, and... Again, it's very common. If you pick, um, let's say, Malfurion, then you need a burst healer because Malfurion cannot save anyone. He doesn't have cleanse anymore. Um, you know, possibly pair that with Medivh and get away with it that way, but still, you do need to be bringing a second support. Um, and I think that's why, in my opinion, the meta has arisen. Um, I agree. The thing is that 
I, I do think Rhaegar is too good. I, I think Rhaegar is the exception to this because what Rhaegar brings is he's the only general healer. He's he is a healer who has this huge healing tool, a huge called an ultimate that can save almost anyone in Incestual. He still has cleanse. He still has good burst healing. He's one of the more solid sustain healers. He really does do everything. And then he also brings damage and wave clear. Like, something has to give in Vega. And I, I think it looks to me like they're pushing him more into a sustain and damage and wave clear healer. Um, which I am actually fine with. I, I do think the Rhaegar changes kind of do need to happen. I dislike the way they've done it, but I do think the direction's solid there. Yeah, do you think Rhaegar is going to lose cleanse in the immediate future? I as think, a result of trying to specialize him more? Rework, I think his next rework he's losing cleanse. That's my prediction. Yeah, I don't think it'll even take like a rework. Like, I really? think they're coming really close to just removing cleanse. I don't know. That's just... The feeling I get from like making his heal more spread heal suggests to me that they're like not okay with how much single target healing he has. So then mm -hmm. the next place to take it away is cleanse. But I don't know. So that's the PTR balance patch. It's not live yet, but Rhaegar okay. they they flatlined his Q. Everyone, um, the Q mm -hmm. is the same amount of healing as the main target and the secondary chains. The chain bounces less, so you need to clump up a little bit more. So you can't be like, oh well, Illidan's almost dead. I'm gonna heal him, and that heal will then get value elsewhere by bouncing onto other targets. It it doesn't matter. Your primary target is still gonna be the first target that receives the heal, so it's still mm -hmm. gonna be good to you know cast it on that the proper target. Uh, but it won't give them additional healing. Um, they did not change Ancestral, though, if I remember correctly. Mm -mm, no, just no the heals, the only change on the PTR patch, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting, because he already has Ancestral for the snap big save, right? That does It's a big playmaker monster heal. He has spread healing with his, with his base kit, which, did they bring up the secondary heal? I think they did. On Chain? Yeah. On the PTR? So, yeah, they did. Yeah, so they brought up a secondary heal. He still has single target heal with Ancestral. It's just, you know, heroic, but... Um, and he still has, like, Earth Shield, so he still does have more burst sustain than, like, Malfurion, right? Um, even with that change. So, I want to talk a bit about the Vagar changes, actually. I, I wrote this on my Discord, which you can check out somewhere. I can't link it right now, but... Um, so someone asked me, what do you think of the Rhaegar changes? And I really dislike them. Uh, and the reason I dislike them is something I talked about a few weeks ago on the show was about the skill being removed from healing. And I think this is a classic example. So this is a really subtle thing. And in the end, it's not going to be a big deal for the large majority of people. It's not even a big deal for me. So it's definitely not a big deal for anyone else. Um, but... Vagar was one of the heroes with the highest discrepancy between healing numbers uh, when comparing divisions and when comparing like pro players to each other. So Uther was the highest, Vagar close behind, and Karazim used to be at the top, but actually fell down a lot with the Iron Fist changes. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, when you want to heal as Vagar right now uh, on Live Patch, wait. Were they going to say his life or PTR? PTR. Live. PTR. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. changes, yeah. So, so when you want to hear with Vega right now on live, you have to make the decision of, okay, this is my main hill. It's bigger. And these are my secondary hills. They're smaller. Here's how it chains. So if you run into someone, cue them, immediately run away, and there were no other allies close, that hill would not chain. Um, but if you did run in, uh, like, if you kept running or stood still after casting the hill, then it would chain to you. So you had to make a, pos a positional decision whether to chain your heal or not. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, let's imagine allies are low, and you can chain it if you waste a bit of the overhealing, or you put the bigger heal on a lower target, but that means you can chain it through you, who also need it, to someone else. It is pretty complex to explain, but the who you heal, how you heal, where you stand, and how much you wait for your team to reposition was super, super interesting. Um, and I'm afraid, um, <laughs> Jake, what have you done? I, I meant to, I hit the wrong button. I meant to, how do I unban? 
Anyways, continue. And the thing I really dislike about those changes is that all of that dynamic and stuff that I really enjoyed playing around is, is just completely gone. Like, I literally just have to stand in a position to make sure my heel is balanced now. And that's it. That, that's all the thinking. I, I, it's the meme right now, but do you guys know about this whole, like, 4D chess, like, memes? Like, you know, you could have played 4D chess. You wouldn't get much benefit, but it was really satisfying to do it. And there could be situations where that did change the game for you. You can only play 2D chess now. Like, you've gone all the way down. Like, mm -hmm. Oh. <clears throat> I was so confused. I was like, I thought, okay, just, just so chat knows, I thought there was a more button, not, and it was actually the band button. I didn't read the hover <laughs> text. I thought it was more options. And alas, uh, I'm not logged into the proper Twitch account to mod someone. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, but really what they're doing with Rhaegar is they're still specializing him further, right? The fact they're taking Burst away He's less general. He was the one support that was still truly just like fine against pretty much anything. And the gender, mm. they're further focusing what he can do. Um, and that's what you guys are saying is creating the double support, right? We have all these focused heroes that cannot like be a solo support in every case. So picking your support or early um, is, well, you know, and sometimes risky unless it's Rhaegar because you need to be able to respond. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I mean, I personally, I'm so torn on it. Like I, I love the new supports. I love these changes they're making. I think Anna is like a great example of support. Her healing is like, it's not huge, but it's, it's, it's consistent. It's fun. It's interactive. Uh, it feels good when you're doing it well. She's got a good form of CC. She's got a good form of utility. Her W, you guys expressed your concerns on the, the healing mitigation. Um, but like when you put her aside, a lot of these are the big healers. She just, she just doesn't stand up and she's never going to be that solo support. So we'll see. How do you guys feel with the Brightwing changes? I think Brightwing's going to be insanely strong now. Really? I think the combination of all the effect of all the changes, like the increased heal AoE, AoE combined with the pixie dust on the Z target, combined with the shield also going on Brightwing, I think solves a lot of her problems that she had for Z build Brightwing. And as a result, she'll be like a high contender for your secondary support. Like if we're thinking of the game in terms of it's not about like, whether you'll have two supports now, it's about you will have one AOE slash sustain support and you will have one primary target saving support. Like Brightwing, I think, is firmly in contention now for high priority for the AOE healer role. Especially on big maps. Yes, where the gold can get... I mean, obviously, if the global can get zero value on the map, she's probably not great. But like, I think she is very realistically like just an excellent choice now i mean after these changes let's just look at brightwing ana what do they provide you got lane clear with brightwing you've got consistent heals ana still supplements some heals and then additional healing so it might not be that same kind mm -hmm. of burst sustain but they have sleep dart and they have poly so i like the idea that that's conceptually in some cases doable obviously if there's yeah. big burst damage that's not going to work it's not going to be an optimal case but um they're at least not too they're not they're not the Malfurians, right? Or they're giving you uh huge, huge healing. I wonder where Malf will sit without cleanse and without as much AoE as like the Brightwing and the Lucio. It's hard to say. Malf, I don't remember if it was undocumented live or undocumented PTR, but his mana cost on here was going from forty five to forty, which okay. is gonna help him out a lot. Yeah. Um Five mana cost seems very minor, but when playing mouth, mana is a tug of war. Mm -hmm. Like, you want to heal on cooldown, you want to be pressing W, and your E is a big hit to your mana. So you're playing a constant tug of war of just enough regen to make it by. A five mana cost is huge in that tug of war, even though it's not much overall. So that's going to really help him out. And might uh, bring him back as a aggressive 
support with the root um, when paired with someone who can really save allies. Yeah, good point. Uh, going down the list here for the other changes to Brightwing, I, I think the only thing that I want to point out that's uh, what I think is big is just the changes to globals across the board. Um, it's now if you interrupt a global, Brightwing doesn't just get stunned and then cast phase shift again. If you cast phase shift, you're, can, you're you have to be confident that you are going to be able to execute that phase shift. If you get stunned, it is put on a 10 second cooldown like a heroic. And this is true for any kind of global, whether it be Dahaka. And I think it's really good because it makes those, um, those global pushes, those global plays that much more punishable and that much more risky um, from the person doing them. On the PTR, there is a bug right now where if you cast phase shift on a target and that target dies, it puts it on full cooldown and it feels terrible. On the live <laughs> server, that doesn't happen. So hopefully that's not an intended change. I really like that change to globals overall. Mm. I think the... it's a... Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I kind of touched the air. Uh, the thing I was going to say is I, I kind of feel like this is awkward. So... Something I enjoyed about when you ganked someone was that there was a mini game of you need to bait them to stunning you and you need to not take enough damage that you can then fly after they've blown all their stuns while also just trying to run away in case they don't have a stun or anything like that. So it was a really fun like mini game like mechanical like 1v1 or like 1v2 like situation without any way to cancel the fly. So Falstad is great at this. You, you can start channeling fly you see they're about to stun, so you start walking, you know, they stun like nothing, or maybe they still stun you, but you still have fly available. You can then gust them once they've used like their interrupts or gap closers. So that was really interesting. So what I kind of want is like there to be a period where you can start channeling and you don't commit. So you can still cancel it by pressing Z yourself or walking. It does put it 10 second cooldown, but it still allows you to move. Wow, that needs to be universal, be though. Stuck. I feel because like Brightwing can't cancel, yeah. Falstead can, Brightwing can't, you know. Yeah, so. so I'm the same thing. I'd like to see a unification of like mm. I start the bow as Abathur. Oh, I right click and cancel it. I start the bow as the hacker, guys. I'm locked in, like I'm coming in five seconds, like whether I like it or not. Like, yeah, yeah, give it the 10 second penalty of canceling it. Yeah, um, it does create a, a margin of error. And if you accidentally cancel, and that's going to feel bad, but, you know, live and learn, right? Uh, you, you still have that flexibility. I think it's a trade-off that's worth it. But I agree. You need to, that needs to be consistent for the globals. They've treated the globals consistently and tuning cooldowns and, and these kind of, you know, impacts of where if you get stunned out. Um, but the fact that a false dead can micro and a bright wing can't micro uh, with their global to deny the stun from being a value, that's definitely... Interesting. Um, any thoughts on the medic changes, Bakery? Um, okay, so I still don't enjoy playing medic right now, but she is still a strong hero. Um, like, now that you can use W and grenades, you can actually use them. Uh, obviously, she's a lot more flexible in terms of how you lane and what she can bring to her team. Um, slight buff to that downtime period, which is really nice. Would you like take one second off the energy reduction cooldown? Slight buff to her health. Not sure that one was needed. Um, I think diving medic is a specific you should be able to. Um, I don't think she needed a health buff. Yeah, fair enough. Dunk, any thoughts? I, I Actually, I really like the level 1. I forgot they changed. The level 1, they gave her more attack range, and it only applies on heroes. I mm -hmm. think it's super high skill cap. I really enjoy playing with that. Yeah, I definitely think that talent is way cooler now. Incentivizing healers to auto-attack enemy heroes. Incentivizing healers and mages to auto-attack enemy heroes, I think is something that absolutely should be done because it increases the skill cap. Like Bakery said, um, having to weave in your auto-attacks to improve your healing output as medic uh that's huge that means that the more skilled you are the more auto attacks you weave in the more healing output you have 
Like you get a very direct feedback of I'm doing this right and I'm getting better at healing, which is my primary function, by getting better at the game overall mechanically, mm -hmm. which is something that's lacking in the attack while moving heroes. Um, and so I really like that talent change as well. It's interesting because, you know, I had the opportunity to kind of sit down and, and interview Alan Debiri, and I really need to put that interview online. Um, but the uh, one thing I mentioned to him was that Tyrande feels really cool as like a blow up, you know, utility, everything support. But as a healer, if you get zoned out, if you're ever pressured too far away where you're not getting autos, you're just not healing. You're just completely worthless. And like giving her a talent akin to this, which Medic now has for that additional range, I think would be like, she's supposed to be an archer, right? She's the one support that has that bow, that has that archer's, you know, feel. And um, when you're denied those opportunities to get your, your autos in, she's just, you're not doing shit for the heals. So... <laughs> Maybe we'll see more of that, but I, I agree. This is really nice to see that incentivized uh, even further for the medic. Uh, Stukov, what do we got? It's just damage reduction decreased. Meh. Is that is that huge or uh, no? I don't. I know nothing about Stukov. He's not my boy. I, I mean, kind of like oh, that tank keeps getting answer. buffed. Vayne Zulsers is like, I think it's still value. The issue is, is that right now. Stukov's builds do rely on taking a level 1 talent that isn't Spine Launcher. So, we're yet to see, like, if Stukov can get away with not taking one of the level 1s for his builds, then that could be a solid talent. Yeah. Uh, Tirana, we they reworked to level 7. It was basically... Splash damage on your auto mm -hmm. attacks versus uh, heroes only. When they initially put this in the PTR, you could actually use it as a form of additional lane clear for her. They took that away. No one picked it for good reason because it was not good. <laughs> and now they've just made it so your Hunter's Mark has a 50% additional range. I, I don't think it's going to be very useful. Um, Hunter's Mark doesn't really need that range in most cases anyways because your your Lunar Flare isn't necessarily going to line up with it and you want to, you know, harmonize the that uh, E and the D. But the Empower nerf is... That was a snap nerf, man. <laughs> very quick. <laughs> that was Come like two deep. weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, the Owl build was... Um, doing very well for a lot of people toronto's win rate i believe was about 56 percent and they took empower's base cooldown uh, by two seconds instead of by four seconds i think it's yeah so, so so just to be clear when you hit a target it's still four seconds it's the base cooldown reduction just the base just yeah. passively picking the talent they reduced yeah it's fine i mean it's it's still something at least they didn't just fully purge it but uh, if you hit three targets, you're still looking at a two second cooldown or something. So it's like, that's pretty good. You're just not machine gun owling as often, unless there's like Vikings or Novas or Samuros, which is probably partially why they nerfed it. I, I would mm -hmm. imagine. I, I don't think it actually changes the thresholds that much, to be honest. No, it adds, I think it's... I think it adds two seconds to one of the owls, and then the full reset owl is the same. I think the full reset owl. Yeah, or it because, like added. Well, the thing is, is the owl has travel time, so if you had cast an owl and one or two seconds later it hits three targets before. That's true. I mean, it's a free cast guarantee, yeah. basically, right? But if it hit two yeah. targets, mm -hmm. it's it was usually like another second, and then you're casting it again in a yeah. lot of long range owls. And considering that it gains power from travel, you know, you're you're, you're going for those when you can. Um, so it does feel significant in the situations where you're hitting two targets for sure. So we have Snitz Hots in chat who's uh, scolding <laughs> us apparently because we have no idea what we're talking about. So what he's saying is that actually that buff to the Tyrande. Ranger's Mark at 7 is actually really impactful because Ranger's Mark is a lower range than Tyrande's autos. So before you had to walk in, mark that target, and then like walk back out again. Or like you had to make some weird movement. If you mm. take the talent now, you can, for a much longer range, open the fight with the mark, uh, which is already valuable in and of itself, but then just open that and then start attacking that target without sacrificing your position or, or doing any weird things. So, that's a solid talent, if not a good one. 
That's fair. Because honestly, I, like Tron is my most played hero. I just get True Shot Aura pretty much regardless of what there is available because I, I don't think the other two talents were that interesting. But yeah, that's that's a good point, Snitch. Thanks for the tip, bro. When are you coming back on the show? Uh, grounding Brew removed from Chen. Purifying Brew. Cooldown reduced to 15 seconds. Uh, so they just kind of made it one. They kind of brought all the spell reduction to level seven, I guess. Because you you gain thirty spell armor while channeling while channeling the fortifying brew. Yeah, so they basically just added grounding brew into purifying yeah. at level seven. But Pretty everyone simple. takes brewmaster's balance, so I don't know. Mm. I'm not a Chen player. Well, I have no idea if this suddenly makes this the better talent to pick, but. The the thing for me is they said like oh it's difficult to pass at Brewmaster's balance but whenever Chen's crept into play at the higher levels it's always or at least recently since the rework it's been with bolder flavor so mm. the, I was slightly concerned about that uh, that comment <laughs> okay um, the hacker. Five damage gone on the auto. I mean, they're just trying to tune him down a little bit. That's fine. The Well, I, I think at some point he had 115 damage on his auto, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. And they so keep nerfing yeah. by five. Yeah, yeah, they they keep it, yeah. Well, like, the thing is, I'm trying to talk with Chaos OS about this, but, like, if that changes the Dhaka breakpoint from one auto to two autos on range minions, it's a dramatic nerf mm. to his clear speed. Yeah. Point. And it's, that's uh, the thing is, like, clear, I, think. I don't know... Like at what levels that's going to have an impact? Because right now at Tahaka, right at level one when the game starts, it takes two autos to clear range minions, and then like at some point in the game, like usually around level three, I think it starts taking one auto, um, and then it goes back up to two, and then it goes back down to one when you take increased auto attack damage or minus armor at thirteen. So like if this makes it so it always takes two autos, for example, then that's like a huge nerf. But like I don't know if those numbers do that exactly at all times. It's kind of hard to evaluate. But it could be a big deal, just in terms of adding like four seconds to every wave you have to clear or whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. Those small tweaks can definitely make the impact seem bigger than mm -hmm. it looks. Um, yeah. Garrosh just more mana cost, and they're nerfing into the fray, buffing body check. Does body check not see a lot of play? Garrosh, I've played none. Yeah. He, body check sees absolutely zero play. Okay. It's all uh... Q or E. Like, I wouldn't say none. I, I have seen people pick it for sure, that, even in HCC. But yeah, I'd say it's more common to see Q or E. Yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't say none. So just Asterisk. trying to run him out. Does it, I mean, the mana cost? Does he just have unlimited mana? Is that just a change? Yeah, that basically. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I quite like these changes. They're, uh, they're listening to us, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I mean the, the two people that like mana management that are making changes for us. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I mean, I I just think you shouldn't be able to cast all your abilities on cooldown every time and not run out of mana. Uh, and small changes like that help move it towards more skill based ability management. Yeah. Did they increase the entomb cooldown during the PTR? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're From like, this was the to seventy five, and then Wait, they were like, eh, never mind, guys. Like, yeah. let's take it back down. Yeah. Okay. So that's a a snap change. We had open division last night and we saw Leoric two or three two or three times march every single game that he was played. Uh except for one, in fact, and that was the only game that Leoric won, if I'm not mistaken. Um <laughs> now that I remember that. But it's yeah, it's interesting to see those changes made so quickly. We did miss a bunch of heroes at the top because we started at Brightwing. Let's see. Some Cassia love. I mean, let's just kind of summarize it. Cassia, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on these changes? Is it good for her or not really so a big my, deal? My initial reaction was, hey, that's kind of nice. Not a big deal. But a lot of the Cassia players are actually really concerned about uh, moving Seraph's him from 13 to 1 just because they thought that was a fun talent that they liked picking and they liked that power spike and they don't feel like they can pick it anymore because it has to compete with child strikes which mm. is a very very scary level one talent so yeah overall i don't think dedicated cassia players were too happy about these bromeo dunk train they brought the quest down to 60 do you think 80 was a little unreasonable 
Yeah, I think it was a little unreasonable. It should have been 100 or 120. <laughs> I know you love Chromie so much. Um, yeah, it's just a nice quality of life thing. You know, the way Chromie works nowadays, if you haven't played her since the rework, every time you hit a Q, you get a point towards the quest. But if you manage to hit consecutive Qs, you get two points and then three points and then four points. And, um, you know, it's a big wind up, right? And, you know, unless you're playing against Paper Bag League, then you're probably going to miss your third or your fourth queue and not consistently be able to get those big combos. Uh, but I do like I do like the idea of that queue being empowered by successfully hitting them. Rewards, good play, not just lucky play. And the change to 60. I, I've never seen someone complete it in a, in a competitive match, so... Okay, we'll so well, the, the, the thing for me, me. Uh, the thing for me is this comment says like only about forty percent of Chromies were actually completing the quest, um, and I think the comment says that as if it's an issue. To me, that wasn't an issue. I was fine with that. Like I'm completely fine with her trait being like just the stacking, and the reward is like a long goal it's like you don't have to reach that to get value from the trait you don't have to reach that to play chromie properly even honestly i was quite enjoying the fact it was only happening 40 percent of the time because when it did happen it was a big moment yeah that's true um i i do think actually the reason this was changed is because her level 11 talent that lets her swap with the Swap with the it's a dead um, talent. Yeah. Image, yeah. It's, it it was, it just, it's just impossible to justify taking it. Mm -hmm. It's not even that great when you have it. And you never get stacks in time. So you still have a dead talent for quite a few levels yeah. uh, in almost all games. So um I would probably have rather seen them keep it at 80 and make that talent have a passive where it gives you Echo of Heaven or Echo of Sand or whatever. Uh, at, you know, 60, 50, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, that could be cool. Just incentivize it even further. Well, uh, maybe that'll be a future change. Who knows? But the idea of having dead talents is never a good thing, you know? Uh, that always just feels bad. Uh, down to Kel'Thuzad, mana cost increase, Frost Blast down to 80 seconds from 100, and then Shadow Fisher getting some nerfs. They brought that up to 20 seconds from 15. Just trying to level this heroics. The Shadow Fisher, so ridiculously useful and convenient to have a global and another ability to just throw into your combo to blow someone up. Um, I think, I don't know what the pick rate is comparing the two, but I think this it, It's going to be quite one sided, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any surprises here? Anything else you think that he might need adjusted? They actually nerfed his respawn as well. That's kind of good. 12 regen globes now. I think they... Um, I think they nerfed him probably a little too much overall. Oh. Uh, I, I don't... I agree. I don't think he's hero league playable after these changes. Honestly, all, all combined. Shit. Like, he's already a huge liability just because of how vulnerable he is. And if you don't solve that problem, you are... Like, if you do solve that problem of him being vulnerable by either drafting him in the right place or protecting him effectively, he's extremely powerful right now. But I feel like after these changes, um, he's just not worth it for Hero League. He might be still worth it in competitive. I don't know. Um, just because I haven't seen any actual competitive play of him. So I don't know how realistic it is that he lands all his skill shots and such. But the mana changes combined with dramatically nerfing glacial spike is a really big deal i mean the glacial spike is the really big nerf here so yeah. before let's imagine a combo so someone is never going to be melee range of chaos is that unless they're diving him let's just say it's a standard you're in lane situation you put your glacial spike down max range now the distance that someone can run especially on a mount but even just normal just walking 100 percent speed in 0.5 seconds is actually huge. The difference between trying to combo someone who's close to you it is ridiculous with how big this uh, this nerf is in the delay. It's very, very hard to actually combo someone with the Glacial Spike now, unless they are committing to fight you. I think that's probably what they wanted. I think yeah, I think, I think so. It was a Kel very Thuzad. frustrating talent. 
it gives Kel'Thuzad um, the ability to do his full combo anywhere, right? And in a solo win situation, it's going to allow him to still just go ahead and body that target if when that target decides to collapse in on them. The damage taking taking away from that, I don't think that's the issue. It's the utility, right? I mean, take the damage. How mm -hmm. often is that? The even... damage is almost non-existent. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not even relevant, but it's just that that one second build up. And it's still going to feel really good because you look at the talent. Um, what is the cooldown on it again? 30, 30 seconds 30 seconds 30 yeah. seconds to be able to body block someone with with zero risk 30 seconds to be able to combo someone in other situations there's so many points that you think about garden of terror fighting uh the the little walkway just below the bottom terror that spawns <laughs> like that's a perfect place to body there's so many locations where it can be a very um impactful structure that you can summon not just for the combo but for that so I think it's warranted. I think it will seem even more impressive when those combos do hit with the Glacial Spike, um, but it also opens up the level seven tier uh, towards maybe other picks more more often, which is probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, I think the chains are solid, but- uh, It's mm -hmm. a big nerf, yeah. I just want to definitely stress, this is bigger than it looks at first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I also, yeah, I agree. I agree he needed, so I totally agree. I think the, cha I think the nerfs all targeted the right things, so um, if that wasn't clear, like all of these nerfs, I think were actually deserved. Like Glacier Spike needed a nerf desperately. Chains of Ice was obviously the go-to pick on that tier. Hunger yeah. and Cold was obviously doing too much damage. I 100% things were on target nerfs. Mm -hmm. It's just, I think they did many of them? Comp I, I mean, I actually think t nerfing all these is fine, but they should have compensated his base a little bit, I think, um, because just my impression of his balance level, but. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I guess we'll have to see. I haven't, yeah, it'll be interesting. The changes myself. I'm, I'm looking sure. forward to seeing him in HGC this weekend, honestly, just because I want to know if he's actually good, yeah, like or just how good. Obviously, I know he's good in this state, obviously. I really hope he gets played in the show match tomorrow. Uh, I want to see Anna, I want to see Anna Kalthuzad combo like that. That sounds so fun, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, who cares about Butcher? Throw got more health, and those <laughs> are the changes mm -hmm. to, to the live. Oh, match. also. It's really important if you could scroll down to the bug fixes. Um, this is really worth talking about. Uther got some bug fixes, <laughs> and so did Jaina, that are huge <laughs> nerfs. Absolutely monstrous level nerfs. Ooh. Public service announcement. Uther is absolutely turbo nerfed now, and in my <laughs> opinion, not a hero outside <laughs> of competitive when you're denying stun one-shots. Well, and was... Jaina additionally is also, I believe, very weak now. Previously, the Frost Armor talent was allowing Jaina to ignore her bad matchups by ignoring Spell Armor, uh, and as a result, she was extremely powerful even at hitting Frontliners. Um, and now that is no longer the case, so I believe that she is again out of the meta because she's too weak against the Spell Armor tanks. And then Uther's nerfs are just huge throughput and utility nerfs, and as a result, I don't think he's a hero either. Well, obviously you can still Divine Shield Genji, but then you're not really playing Uther, are you? You're playing Divine Shield <laughs> Genji. Confirm Dunk Train relies on bugs and exploits. <laughs> Hashtag BlizzCon champ. Uh, no, that's those are big changes, though. That needed to happen with Jaina. As, much, as fun as it is to be able to not have the armor apply to all your abilities. Oh, you know. yeah, no question. <laughs> but, like, we were seeing... We were actually seeing Jaina in GM games at, like... I would say there was probably like a maybe a 40% Jaina involvement at GM games. Um, and everyone I saw was using the Frost Armor because the bug actually made her a real hero. Like she was a little bit broken against Garrosh, I would say. Specifically, she hard countered that matchup too much um, with that talent. But other than that, she was like pretty much balanced. Like it didn't help her kill Squishies because Squishies don't generally have armor. So it didn't make her more of an assassin in that sense. Um, it just made her actually not instantly lose the game to Diablo or Stitches or a new Brack in her face. And now she will do that again. So, again, she's probably out of the meta. Well. For Hero League, of course. I mean, in competitive, she has niche viability because of, like, Ring of Frost Zeratul combos or Mene playing her or whatever. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, by the way, I just, I just love the hacker. Oh, the, the Diva Tint? <laughs> yeah, they, they were so on point with their memes oh, in the, the skins yeah yeah 
So just to conclude the, the patch notes section, we were only talking about the live patch this week. There is a PTR patch yep. that has many other changes. Although those changes are public, they're not finalized. Uh, the assumption is that they will go live next Tuesday. That's typically the flow. And, you know, bearing that is true, we will talk about that next week on Town Hall. Um, favorite skins, are you going with the Diva Dahaka for the new skins? Uh, I mean, no, I'm, I'm going with the Diva the Destroyer, actually. Diva the My Destroyer? Oh, I forget. Can, does anyone in chat know the command line? to look at it if you know the command line please type it to me there's a line you can type to look you at can, it yeah you can you yeah, can actually you, type you can a, type like battle net like it's basically the file slash, location slash, like yeah oh, okay it's as if you were linking the um the item or like the you know the skin to someone else alt f4 so funny so funny you guys are clever <laughs> uh, anyways uh there is a way to look at it but I don't know the exact code. <laughs> Dump Delete system 32. That's a solid advice, Jake. Get on that. Mm -hmm. like, get that system 32 out of there. Oh, wait. Somebody got a bot warning for trying to link it? Oh, no. They didn't actually link that. They just said, like, it's a link that links to this site. Yeah, uh, whatever. Mm. Any, uh, Dunk, do you agree? Do you have a destroyer? Is that your bay? Mm, I actually think the Strike Anna skins look really cool. Honestly, like just the Anna secondary skin that they're releasing, like Even I think it looks it's a, dank. It's an Overwatch port, man. Still, like I think it looks really cool. The faceplate and stuff reminds me of uh, Zero from Borderlands Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, it does. It really does. Yeah, I like this so. Skin. As we transition into HTC, there was a question in chat which I thought was actually super cool. Uh, from Draconi, and I did want to get um, to get to it, which was if I turn out to be a really good Anna, will I play Anna and force like you know Snitch or uh, Mane to learn like Uther or something? Um, and I think the answer is actually it kind of depends on the region. Um, so in NA, I think it's very likely that you might see the players that really have a strong affinity for. Um, Anna, like, flex onto that hero. So, you know, possibly June, Buds, like, if they're really good at Anna, they might be able to flex onto it. But the... Oh, my God, it happened. Oh, what? Um, the thing is that in, in Europe, the di difference that we have stylistically is that we're very much role-orientated, whereas NA tends to be more hero-affinity-orientated. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, even if I'm literally the best Anna in the world, I probably will never play it. Almost 100% will not play it, unless it's a solo support. Just because we value keeping our roles more rigid, more mm -hmm. rigid than that. I just thought it was an interesting uh, difference that I've noticed between the regions. I yeah. think Korea and yeah. China both veer more towards the NA way of doing it. So, it's not that one way is strictly better. You're saying NA sucks, Bakery. That's what you're saying. <laughs> He's saying NA, yeah. Korea, and China suck. EU is the one true EU master is, yeah. The one reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. It's it's cool, though. The Diva skin. Sorry. I've just been full, full tunnel vision on this. I appreciate... Have you seen the portrait, Jake? In the bottom of my screen? Oh, the, yeah, the portrait. Well, portrait. Okay. That? Yeah, dude. Looks really cool, man. <laughs> S Styles, thanks for the, the tip the on how to do this, man. Kill the mech? Yeah, so we can see actual diva. Well, I gotta I gotta go die then. <laughs> oh no, my fear is healing you. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, mouth. Uh wait, can I just toggle cooldowns? There we go. Explosion looks more or less the same as far as I can tell. Let's, uh, That's pretty decent. Let's just go to 20. Alright. It's really cool, man. 
I mean, this is this is the first skin in a while where I'm just straight up like, that's a must buy. You know, there's a lot of skins I like. This is one that I like. I need, I need to purchase. <laughs> like when it goes for sale, I'm buying it. There's mm -hmm. no, there's no uh, ifs and ors, buts, no buts. I don't know how you don't pick this as your favorite skin of the patch, though. That's that's just weird. <laughs> Some cool stuff though. Variant skin is is Dece. I I just learned this. I didn't know this for the longest time that you could click on the search bar on the skin mm -hmm. and then or go to skins and then just hit space and it'll show you all the new skins in order. I didn't know that was a thing for the longest time. That's probably S Styles that taught me that as well. A lot of cool new stuff on the way. <laughs> but, you know, from from uh, just reskins or new skins. These this golden Zarya to go with the golden Lucio that already exists, which is really cool. I like how the Overwatch heroes are getting skins that you know, like Lucio Diva is miserable. It's miserable, <laughs> but I still appreciate it. You know, like ugh. oh like, Jesus, it's, it's so garish. His mm -hmm. Arthalon written all over it. Mm -hmm. You know he'd rock this. I expect none none less from him. Um, Great stuff coming from there. Let's talk about HGC. So we're going to open up the HGC topic with Mopsio. Mopsio um, was in, the, I mean, the, the, the story is potentially intentionally throwing or AFKing. It wasn't AFK. It was just, was he feeding? It was not participating not in participating a yearly game, basically. In a yearly game. And like, the, yeah. the, uh, this was on Mune stream, correct? Mune mm -hmm. Yeah. The uh, basically what ends up happening in this situation is Mopsio is a HGC player on Zealots in HGC Europe. When you're an HGC player, you I guarantee you have a contract. Each contract is probably different. At the end of the day, you're representing Blizzard and you're being given a salary. Your obligations are to compete in your matches when they're scheduled, to do your best to try to climb the ladder, and to be a figurehead of the scene. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Um, but, you know, people get upset. I, I rage on ladder. It happens to everyone. But when you're playing in Hero League and if, you know, Blizzard is really, they just put on a, a video on the Overwatch team. Jeff Kaplan did this, um, the Playfair, whatever uh, video, I forget what they titled it. It's one of the firm standards of Blizzard. And they toxicity is just not something they, they want to promote. Mm -hmm. and straight up he got a one week ban from hgc where zealots had two games to play that week um and you know even if you find a great sub which they did it's still gonna mess with your synergy a bit so dunk what are your thoughts on this whole situation um well obviously like it's kind of sad to have pro players doing this in kind of stuff in hero league games and I think Blizzard did the right thing, taking immediate action. Um, the Basically, once it was video recorded, Blizzard took action like by the end of the day, yeah. once it got seen. So I think it was absolutely the correct decision by Blizzard, by the esports team, whoever it was, just immediately showing that this kind of thing is not okay, because I think that's really important. Bakery? I think, yeah, I mean, I, I something had to happen. Um, like, when, when, I don't think I've ever seen a thread that isn't a game announcement or trailer skyrocket to the little top of Reddit. <laughs> it was like, at some point, it was like 100 on all slash all or something. I was like, oh, my God. Like, mm -hmm. it, something had to be done very quickly. So the response was definitely accurate. Um so, I mean, you definitely got to look at this in, in a few different ways. Obviously, he was punished. One week off from the game um, is, is it's, it's meaningful, but it's also like, I think it seems fine as like a first strike kind of thing. But how do they like really dissuade pros from doing this, right? One week at the end of the day, when you look at like things like NFL and, and stuff like that is nothing. It's, it's not a harsh punishment. If anyone thinks that Blizzard was severe with this, I'm sorry, they were not. This was a slap on the wrist in the grand scheme of things. In, in uh, other events, you're talking about fines. Your teams, your contracts, they will fine you for these things. Maybe $1,000. You know, you don't know what the fine is. Could be 200 bucks, could be $500, could be whatever. And again, we don't 
don't know the stipulations of how their contracts work. For all we know that not playing in those two matches is actually a fee. Maybe, I don't know if it's an appearance fee. Like their contract could be, you get paid per games played. So if they don't play in their match, then they don't get paid for those matches. That could be the case. I don't know. But um, if this is like, if other players are caught doing this kind of thing, Blizzard needs to crack down. I'm really glad they did immediately. But this was, in my opinion, a, a fairly light punishment. Absolutely. So the I had like two major issues uh, with how what Blizzard did. Um, the first is hmm. th just the announcement itself. It, it was announced on Reddit. Yeah. And that's not a person that yeah. I like. Like yeah. as a as a reply to a Reddit thread was the official announcement, which mm -hmm. I was not happy about. Like I don't like that person mm -hmm. of first off setting Reddit as an official place, but second off having the official announcement there. As as a Heroes Esports fan, I literally had to be looking at Reddit across about twenty four hours. Like it was on the front page, maybe. Um how long was that comment there before the third drop down? Maybe not even 24 mm. hours to even know that this had happened. It was there was no announcement part, yeah. on the official site. There was no yeah. tweets from any official accounts. Like it was literally only ready. It's not even on the forums or anything. Um, to me, a... that's not acceptable. Yeah, it's... I didn't even think about it, but that that's also. Really bad. Yeah, that also kind of sends kind of sends the message that it only mattered because it was on Reddit. If Reddit's yeah, the official absolutely. announcement, it does kind of send that message. Same way. And even if that's not what they intend, like that's how it's going to be perceived. Like, yeah, yeah. so that's not good. Um, the other thing fair. is that so esports didn't actually punish Mopsio as far as we know. So what actually happened in this case is Mopsio intensely lost his team the game. Thread gets posted to Reddit. The customer service team then goes, oh, here's some guy intensely losing his team the game. Banned. Um, obviously, mm. no witch hunting rules because uh, well, it of was, the it way that just, a, pro, a pro figure works. It was well, supposed no, to be esports so, that made the announcement. No, it wasn't. I don't think. I think it was a community manager that made the announcement. I don't think that's true. Okay. I mean, maybe maybe it was a community guy who made the actual announcement. I know for a fact that didn't uh, CS Steve respond to the thread, though, say we're looking into mm -hmm. this? Yeah, so CS Steve yeah, that responds an, to the event and says, actually, yeah. we're on this, guys, like, we're looking uh -huh. at it. Um, a community manager then replies to either Matt or, like, okay. the other top okay. comment and says, okay. okay, here's the ruling. Yeah. Um, like, to me, again, like, Esports didn't get involved. So the way that HTC rules work is if you are banned on your HTC account, you're not allowed to play in HTC. And that's what happened. Mm. Is Mopsio got banned on his main account by customer service, that's community, and then could not play in HTC. Okay. Um so I, I wanted to see a ruling from HTC. I I like just anything. Yeah. Uh again, just an official announcement. This is the esports team, here's what we're doing about it. Yeah. I agree. The heroesofstorm.com slash esports site. It's not like it's flooded with news all the time. There's enough articles that it's fair and not overwhelming. Injecting another piece that's a ruling that actually affects a team in a meaningful way towards the end of the season. That not being an article on the, the website does seem like, you know, you guys, it's a league, right? Why yeah. is this huge bit of league? Yeah. Like, there's no way an NFL player gets <laughs> gets injured or gets you know mm -hmm. whatever uh, and is out of a match and, and it's, it's not, not reported everywhere. On, like, yeah. Everywhere, right? Yeah. That should be this is big news. Well, it should, well here's know. the thing: is news outlets actually picked this up? We had Dot Esports, we had like PC gaming websites, like PC Gamer N, which is you know like but a big the community point site, of the HTC the story, website the is a one sources did stop not. location to know everything about the pro scene, right? That is the goal of this website. It should be at least. And yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, okay. And well. my last issue um, with it is this punishment was way harsher to Zealots than Mopsia. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, that's an issue. Like, Z Zealots really got screwed here. Again, they, they picked up a good sub, but you saw how strong Zealots looked in parts. Like, if you look at maybe... 20% of the games and just pick out the highlights. Zealots looks like a fantastic team. And they did in scrims across that week as well. They looked really strong with Lauber. But there was not enough time for them to actually 
adapt to their whole new dynamic of the team when they are missing their shot and after. Not enough time for Lauber to learn how to play against at the highest level. Not enough for his teammates to adapt to how Lauber plays. There just wasn't enough time. And they lost two matches where, realistically, I think they had a decent chance to take one or two games against Fnatic. Um, they should have taken one game against Fnatic, in fact. They were 20-17 to and they threw that. Um... Definitely should be able to beat playing Ducks with how strong they were in previous weeks. This was a really harsh punishment to Zealots. Meanwhile, Mopsio literally just got a one-week break. And we assume now he's back to the team. No issues. I mean, the team can't be happy. That's the other thought. Side. I mean, it's like well, I the mean, team... It, 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 always it, hurts, it hurts the morale. It's just, it has to, right? You have to feel um, a little bit you know, disappointed in your teammate when that happens. Uh, so maybe the solution in the future is they have to write fines or something into the contracts instead. Something that targets the individual and, and, and hurts them and not hurt the team. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, there needs to be a punishment, right? It sucks for zealots, but a punishment had to be inflicted, you know, in this kind of situation. Otherwise, you know, again, if you're a pro player people straight up idolize you. You might not realize it, but there are people that look up to you, that watch your games, and they try to replicate you. And yep. there's room to be a bad boy, but be a bad boy in an intriguing way and not a way that ruins the experience for other people. Um, and that's really the end of that, I think. But we can't talk I, about Mopsio forever because we're already the over last thing our... for me, The last thing for me is that <laughs> I think... If you just come out and you ban Mopsio for a year, that is a harsh punishment. <laughs> I don't think it was overboard. What? And I think that punishes Zealots less in comparison. For a year. Okay, six months. One split of HCC. I one think season. that's a little bit. One phase. For one, like, I, think, I think there's warning. Uh, I think okay. there's strikes. I think there's okay. a strikes, but, like three but, strikes but, around. This, this wasn't one. If you look at that thread, okay. there are at least five examples at the top of him doing this across two days in other okay. people's games well but there still needs to be a warning right they need to be like all right dude that's strike one you can't just suddenly like you know you're he's going around with his random ass hat ass hattery if that's a word for this situation and who knows we don't know we know if if he's like drunk and playing games middle of the night i don't know the context of these situations right not everyone's yeah uh and, and we there's no way it's a video game at the end of the day we don't we there's no way to know the mental state of uh that you know his situation being given a warning you correct it right you need to yeah, be given that okay. warning first right um, but just just to be clear I'm not saying it was the correct call to ban him for a year I'm saying I don't think that was too harsh I would have been okay if that happened is mm -hmm. what I'm saying and I think that is a much fairer punishment to Zealots because they get to bring in a sub and they get to practice about three weeks with the new sub before playoffs. In comparison, all that happened right now is this all this could realistically put them in crucible, Zealots. Um, Which is br it's brutal. And, and it's brutal. We are actually going to transition to talk about the standings uh, opening with North America. So teams have started to earn their way into BlizzCon. If you're here at the start of the show, we did give Bakery a congratulations on Team Dignitas us confirming a spot. Yay. Dunk a clap. <laughs> Congrats, man. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See, at least Bakery, Bakery has some etiquette. He didn't clap for himself. What a guy. Uh, looking at North America, <laughs> Roll20 and Team Freedom did lock in their spots. And, you know, for a long time in the season, Gale Force, they were leading the pack. Uh, Roll20, they struggled at the start of Phase 2. They really did turn up the heat. They went through uh, with that six-win streak at the end. That's really big for them, I feel. And this means that either Gale Force or Tempo Storm, one of them, will not be able to go to blizzcon that's i they're yeah, the two big. longest standing brands in north america and only one can make it craigasm are you guys surprised at all I'm, i mean i'm i'm surprised what happened to get for us when they came back from the western clash i, I gotta say like <laughs> It's it's uh, it's weird. Like you had this team who looked very very strong. They go to a tournament, 
they, I would say, underperform compared to what they could have done, but still a decent placing. Really nothing brutal. Still look on the path to improvement. And we watch them in the league, and it's an unmitigated disaster, basically. Um, I mean, I definitely expected them to be more competitive with Freedom and Roll20. I mean, Lag Force, they stepped their game up recently, but still to see Lag Force go to game five versus GFE. The week the, after Gil Force. The two team go yeah. to game five and in a series was... they could realistically win. GFE invested in a boot camp that week. This was a week where GFE boot camp yeah. and preparations to really get, you know, everything they could out of the matches. They were all in a, in a Airbnb or something, and or it was like a, a sponsor venue in Southern California. And for a lot of teams, that does amazing things for them. For other teams, it puts you out of your comfort zone. Other players play better from their home. And, you know, that's that very well could be a contributing factor to maybe lesser level play in this week in particular. I don't know. It's impossible to know that without inter interviewing each and every player. Right. Um, but yeah, man, it's roll 20. They took that, uh, pretty handily. Yeah. And I mean, big, big, big congrats, however, to roll 20 and freedom on earning that BlizzCon spot. Cause yeah, for sure. There's a lot of first-time BlizzCon players in in that. Uh, this I don't know if there's any repeats. Are there? I'm trying to think back to last year. I don't know. Um, I don't think so. Actually, that, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about that. And North America has been like a, a weird region. I feel overall, you know, with the the rise and fall of these teams throughout this year. Tempo Storm was once at the top. We saw Gale Force looking really good, and it's just been all over the place. But uh, this is going to be our two BlizzCon teams right now. One more will join. And for the Crucible, which is in just two weeks, Lag Force and even in Death, if you haven't followed the amateur side, these points are actually out of date by one cup, which just completed last night, but this is more or less the top eight teams. The teams you're really watching, mostly these three. Donkeys are us. Uh, you know, LZ Gamer's been here since the start. You know, that, that crew has shifted a little bit, but overall they look very good. Imported, they were in the last Crucible. Um, honestly, they put up a better fight than even in death in the last Crucible. They've looked like the better team in the last Crucible. They'll have another shot. And Heroes Hearth, you know, McIntyre, Crow, and Arthlon, a, a lot of names you guys know. And then Ishbu and BBJ, um, talented support and tank player, looking good. But we're having teams like Team Numerics take, you know, games off. They, they beat Donkeys R Us last night in the third, fourth place match, right? So this is a much more compelling uh, double elimination amateur playoff for the Crucible. That'll be here on the Arcane 8 channel. Um, and... I, I think Heroes Hearth absolutely can beat both of these teams. They will likely choose even in death as their opponent, given the chance. Uh, beyond that, it is up in the air. But let's talk about Europe Bakery. Dignitas did lock in that second place spot. Again, congratulations. What do you think after this? Because it's it's up in the air right now. <laughs> yeah, so our, our standings between third and seventh are... Really, really, very, very close. Um, Zealots, obviously, at one point, uh, were looking very strong. With Realistically, if you take away two losses from Zealots and give them two wins, then they're eight and six. They're like, they're pushing for that oh. third seed. Like, very scary. Yeah. Um, obviously, after this week, big blows to them. They're now tied with playing Ducks. So both of those teams have really big matches this weekend. Both of them have to win. Like, um, they are tied against each other. So that comes down to game record where playing ducks have more wins, but zealots have less losses. It's it's a really close race uh, for the Crucible there. Um, if zealots do make it into playoffs, I legitimately think they have a chance to go to BlizzCon. Um, Trick T Sport there. Definitely on a downward trend, but you can't count them out. Team Liquid looking resurgent. Uh, renewed efforts look strong against uh, both us and Gang N this weekend. Uh, oh, sorry, good guys this weekend. Um, they're, they're boot camping. Uh, they've had a big team meeting and they've said, we're going to do this. We're going to do our boot camp. 
think they're traveling either today or tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. So a lot of scary teams here. Um, even Expert, uh, obviously, can't count them out. They're like in 30 right now. Um, they have looked consistently uh, the best out of all those teams. So it's, uh, it's tough. Like, my money is... A few days ago, my money was on Expert. Seeing how Team Liquid have agreed to this boot camp and really all of them seem to have been refreshed and fresh into... Uh, playoffs again. I I believe in them. They've clutched a lot in the past. Uh, playoffs is a, a big event, and there's a lot of money on stake. So, I <laughs> I think dollars. I think Team Liquids like very very like tightly in the lead. Expert very close behind. Um, Zealots up there. Tricks I would say almost zero percent chance. And playing Ducks almost zero percent chance. Sadly, this sim is out of date, Jake. Oh yes. Yeah, there's been there's been a lot of people telling them, but it hasn't yet been fixed. Feels bad, man. Um, well, playoffs around the corner. Regardless, then we have the Crucible happening like this around the same time frame. That is the seventh and the eighth for the Crucible. That'll be NA and EU uh, all on the same weekend, just like last time, to find out which teams stay or which teams rise into the pro scene, and then it's straight up a few weeks off. And into BlizzCon opening week will begin on October 25th through November 5th, where, it, you know, it's a hell of a lot of money on the line. And of course, that big stage uh, of BlizzCon, it's all winding down. It's coming up very soon, and it's going to be great when we finally get there for sure. But unfortunately, we are we are well past the two-hour market tonight. <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I'm itching to eat. Some, some food i'm not gonna lie uh, are we taking one constellation question from chat or one constellation question whoever's first basically yep, yep, gets it's, it, li so. it's literally just <laughs> it, it could be a Calaris asking the question we don't know yet oh wait what, what's a boot camp like eight hour scrim sessions and energy drinks so, so a boot camp is everyone goes to the same place you fly in um you know possibly you make it in the same place as the tournament, possibly you make it in a stronger region, like possibly a Korean boot camp or like a European boot camp or something. So you all fly together, you live together, and you spend literally all day at your PCs um, and hang out with each other. And it's a really good way to build synergy and make sure that every possible hour of your day is dedicated to how do we win. You get to eat together, talk about strats together. Like it's... Uh... It's the team house experience, but condensed in a travel size package. Um, thanks for the question. We are going to move to shout outs. Bakery, we'll start with you, man. So shout outs to Team Us and all of the fans who cheered for us uh, throughout this whole year, but especially uh, after mid-season and uh, after we didn't make Western Clash, like there was a whole lot of support and we really appreciate it. So thanks, guys. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Bakery Heroes. Um, there's some cool stuff coming up. I don't think I can talk about any of it yet, but I'm doing some <laughs> cool stuff like now, guys. So keep an eye out for that. Cool story, bro. That's a good one. Dunk Train, the 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 homeowner, the home renter, whatever it is. Home renter, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just kind of doing my own thing. So shout outs to viewers, fans, subs. All of you guys making it possible, trying to move out. You know how it is. The God. The God dunk train. Um, yeah, for me, guys, in terms of the MP3, our hosting service has been uncooperative with the last episode, and it's still not uploaded. I have tried multiple formats. I have tried changing the bit rate. I have tried everything I know that I can change with the file, and it fails to upload. Um, so going to continue looking into that, but apologies for the MP3 feed being a little, a little dated in that regard. We still have everything on YouTube. We still have everything here on Twitch, of course. Big shout outs to everyone supporting Arcane 8 and of course supporting my personal stream. It's been, it's been really fun at 156. We're also planning a, a reboot in a new edition of Town Hall Heroes shirts. Um, all the proceeds will be, will go to the three of us to help us 
Okay, you know, just kind of like a nice incentive to, as us, as we create the show and a cool way for you guys to rock the Town Hall show if you brand if you really like it. But we're not just going to do the same logo we did from the previous iterations. We wanted to do something a little bit new rather than just click create Teespring campaign. Yeah, um, <laughs> but look forward to that very soon. That's on. Uh, that's coming coming really soon actually. And thanks again for watching episode one fifty seven. I now need to manually drop the video in again so we can close the show. Thanks, Claris. Good job, mate. What did Claris do? <laughs> Look at the chat, Jake. Oh, I've, I haven't <laughs> looked at it. I'm, I'm not going there. GG's! Nice. Happy birthday, Happy birthday,